Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I've made lots of wood hinge boxes, large, medium, small, extra small. I'm going to make an even smaller one for a ring. Stay with me. I'll show you how to make a wood hinge ring box. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I've done lots of videos in the past on making wood hinge boxes, so we'll leave a link below so we can skip through some of those details and get right to this. First part we're going to start off with is the actual size of the box. How big does it need to be? So I'm going to cut up some pieces and we're just going to play around with a little bit. Want it to fit the ring, but and you got to be able to reach in, but you don't want it oversized. So there's going to be a magic number, and we'll play around with some pieces until we get it just right. Now my, I'm going to use that jig that I made, and I'll leave a link to it. A router jig we set up to make a box hinge, a box joint that has a smaller pin than it does the tail. And in order to get the spacing right, that means. The P, this piece needs to be seven-eighths of an inch wide. This piece needs to be about an inch and an eighth. It can be a little bit less if you don't want your top to be th as thick as a quarter of an inch. So with those dimensions, and we've got to keep them. Now I've got this just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. This has to have the hinge groove routed in it. So we're going to route a, uh, a, a part of a circle in here to hold the hinge. So that can't be much thinner than what it is. And that right now is... Oh, it's just shy a quarter of an inch. This one I wanted to be a little bit bigger, but not too big. And I've got it set for 5 sixteenths. These aren't going to be the pieces that we're going to use. This is just for sizing purposes. Now, we could make it square, but that makes for an ugly looking box. And we really want to be able to get your fingers down in there. So, I'm going to, for that reason, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. It needs to be, I'm thinking maybe right about there. So we'll mark that and cut a couple pieces that length. For the, for the amount of time it's going to take, I'm going to go cut these so we can actually put them together because Now remember, this is just our prototype to see if we've got our size right. Now we'd put a bottom in there, obviously going to put a bottom in there, and we can actually put the bottom anywhere we want, meaning we can keep it rather high so you're not, that ring's not going way down in there. In fact... I think what I'll do is actually cut a piece, not necessarily going to put a bottom in there, but I'm going to cut a piece that size and then we can raise and lower it to see where we want the bottom. And just measure that real quick. So I need something that's inch and seven sixteenths by inch and sixteenths. Okay, I've got some spacers. So that one is three eighths of an inch. So if we put that in the bottom, And remember, the lid doesn't go all the way. Well, the lid's up like that, so could you reach in there and get it? I suppose you could always just tip it and make it come out. Now I've got some other spacers that add an extra sixteenth to it. I think that's good. So we'll just go ahead and put a pencil mark. Okay, I'm just going to put a pencil mark on there so we know where to make the top of the bottom. Particular. So what we need for length is 2 and 3 sixteenths. So we're going to need two pieces, 2 and 3 sixteenths by, you know, making those 7 eighths. Now we could change that, but 
Um, I don't really want to change the size of that <clears throat> pin down there and we need this because the lid is actually going to sit down in between these two ends. And these are going to be, uh, we're going to go a quarter of an inch, but it's going to be, I'm going to put an S out shy up there. We're going to make it a little less than that. And then our end pieces are, yeah, we'll say an inch and a half. So we need two of those, inch and a half by inch and an eighth, inch and a sixteenth. And those are going to be five sixteenths. All right, we'll go mill these out now. I'm going to do a lot of this on the bandsaw and with the shooting board just because they're small and I don't like dealing with small pieces around the table saw. There's a... Okay, so here's the parts. Now I'm just going to mark the outside, which one in this case has the best looking bird's eye. That one does, so I'll put a, an X on there. Toss up, I think that one does. So I'll put an X on there. I'm gonna put an arrow so I know which is the bottom. And you'll see why I don't like cutting these small pieces. There's just no mass to them. And the vibration and the action of the cutter just has a tendency to want to grab it. On a large piece, you don't even notice that, but on these small pieces, you certainly do, so you have to be, I would say, extra vigilant. Okay, now we'll go over and we'll cut the uh, groove for the bottom. I've got some leather, save even the smallest scraps, and just a little bit of spray adhesive. We'll give that a few seconds to tack. And I'll just use a utility knife to trim that. I just check it with the back of my, that's good. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. You want that groove to be a little bit on the big side because otherwise, when you try to put that in, if it's snug at all, it'll have a tendency to push that leather off. So that's, that's more uh, loose of a fit than I would want on a wood bottom, but with a piece of leather, that'll... That'll work well. Okay, next move before we put this, assemble this, is we have to go in and get the, uh, cut our, our uh, groove for the hinge. Now there's not a lot of material the rest on 64th of an inch so I couldn't push down too heavy so what I did is I just made several passes pushing the piece tight against the shoulder the uh, fence and then just more or less kind of dropping down on a little more each time until I actually had the full cut made and we want to make sure that there's no bumps along there that that needs to be a nice uniform pass and at that point this piece is ready to assemble that needs to be snug in order for that glue to work that we're going to use. Now I'm going to use my rubber mallet just to tap that into place. We can slide the bottom in. Leather going to be on the inside. 
Well, just before we do that, I just want to sand that a little bit, make it feel a little smoother. notice but that corner just started to pull off that's why you've got to be so careful not to make that groove too small Now, if you need to, you can take your chisel and just use the tip to tuck that leather down into the groove. Now this is the easiest way to glue these because capillary action and that will pull in all around the joint. However, it's extremely thin, it's water consistency, so you have to be careful not to get too much on there. I'm just going to put a little bit on each joint, that's too much. We'll let that set up and while we're doing that we'll go process some material for the lid we'll just check still just a little snug right here a little tight in the back Okay, that's what we're looking for. Now we want to get the back fit. So we're going to pass on that first. Make it smooth. Actually, before I go any further, I need to go in and finish sand this. So I'm going to give that just a little more time to set up. We'll go in and we'll sand this flush so that when we go in here and fit that, we can get it absolutely flush with the two ends. That's flush. Not too proud, it went too far. Okay, that feels good. Now we can go right over and route this top based on that same setting. I don't push down too hard. So it'll take two or three passes.
just too much material to try to take with one pass, so I break it up. So we want this to be just the right size to fit in the wood hinge drill jig. And that's a really good fit. That way we know that that is going to bore it dead center. So we'll come in here and determine our length. Now with a small box like this, I'm just going to do a three piece hinge. That means one, one, piece, one long piece will be attached to the top, uh, to the lid, and two smaller pieces will be attached to the bottom. So with that spinning, that gives me a perfectly centered hole, 1 16th inch in diameter. And this is an easy one to do because we've got it still in the full length. Okay, now we've got a piece of, a piece of uh, welding rod, 16th inch welding rod. And we'll put that all together and get that one cut right to size. Okay, put that welding rod in. Clip it off. Now I don't know how long that needs to be, so we'll see if we can put it together. That's good. Let me line up the, uh, there it is there, the pencil mark. Line it up. Now, I'm going to grab a small chisel. And I'll put this in place. You want to be really careful with this. So we just want to catch that edge right there. And then up here, we're going to lay the chisel against the inside. Oh, that fell off. And try to make a mark that we'll be able to see. <clears throat> and if everything worked out, this should be an accurate fit. There you go. Now, I don't want these little whispers of wood to get in the way, so I'm just going to pull them off to the side. Don't really want to break them because they're you need that the back side of that radius to make for a really well hidden hinge. Now, I'll just use my pencil to indicate where the joint line is. What we're going to do is we're going to wax this bottom section so that when we glue the hinge in place, if any glue happens to squeeze out, it won't seize the hinge. And the masking tape just keeps us from spreading the wax over into the area that needs to be glued. Now I'm just going to use a paste wax and I'm going to use that same end of the eraser just to go in there and don't need to do the whole thing, just primarily the area close to the joint. We can take that out. Now the bottom section is ready. We'll go see if that lid is dry and we can put that together. Okay, with the finish dry, we can take that off. Now, put that in position. And what we want to do is get those 
joint lines transferred accurately. Okay, now we're ready to go. Now, if you put too much glue, you're going to make a mess. And if you don't do enough, you're going to leave the joint starved. So, figure that one out. I try to stay away from the glue, from the uh, joint line. But definitely get some right out here. To make it look good. Make sure I got this lined up. I do. I want that pencil mark on the outside so it can be removed. Now do the top. Spread that around. Again focus on the along this outside edge where it's going to be attached to the dowel to try to make that look as seamless as possible. Put that in place by hand. Now it doesn't need a ton of pressure, just enough to keep it in close contact while the glue dries. Now I've got a belt sander that we have belts to 320 grit, so I'm gonna go do that. But this could be done easily by hand. It's not very big at all, so it wouldn't take you very long. But we'll take that up to 320. And when I come back, we'll cut our chamfers Obviously, we'll test it and make sure it opens, then we'll put a wax coat on it, which is rather quick, and that'll give us a, a, a look at what it's going to look like with a finish on it. Not the most heavy-duty finish, but for something small like this, it'll work. Fingers as good an applicator as any. Now, if you plan to make a little box like that, it better be an impressive diamond. There's your Brazilian rosewood and bird's eye maple wood hinge ring box. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.